Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to look at public and private EC2 instances. What are the differences between them and how do you deal with it from network perspective? So we already have created a VPC and divided it into different public and private subnets. If you want to take a look at that video, the link is shown here. You can first look at that video and then come to this particular video. Or if you are fine with it, you can just go ahead. Uh, so I'm there in this particular North California region and there are no running instances as of now. We go ahead and launch an instance. So what I'm going to do is I'll launch a public instance and a private instance and I'll show you how the communication happens between them. All right. Okay, so we go ahead and choose uh, Windows Server 2008. <coughs> and let me keep it something like M4 large. I'm going to choose my VPC, which I have created. And this particular instance, I'm going to keep public. Okay, and you can see that for this particular instance, uh, I had kept the auto assign public IP property to be true or enabled. That's why it is coming here. So I can just leave it as it is. In case we ever want to override it, we can always do that by launching. So I do this and go ahead and uh, we'll keep it in the shared mode. We'll launch it. So this is fine. I'm going to call it public EC2. So I'll create a new security group. I'm going to call this pub win SG. And I will say run launch. There are no key pairs currently, so we need to create one. And I'm going to call it California. And I'll just download that. Okay, so this gets downloaded. So it launched an instance. <coughs> okay, good. So while this is getting launched, uh, I'll go ahead and launch the another one in the private. So we choose this one and we move forward again. This will keep them for large. We'll move here. We are going to choose my VPC and we'll choose a private subnet. So you can see for the private subnet, the auto assign public IP is disabled, so it is fine. That means it will not have a public IP. We'll move forward. We'll leave these things default. And here I will call it private EC2. Okay. Oops, we'll create one more. We'll call this private win SG. Let us say review and launch. We'll just use the same key and we'll launch this. Okay. <clears throat> so we have got two instances, and the public one is has come up. We'll see if we can get its password now. We'll have to wait for a few minutes. And there are two different security groups as well. So I can show you this. I'll go ahead and do an edit in both the security groups. In the meanwhile, what I'm going to do is I will add one rule of port 80 because I'm going to enable IIS as a service in order to show you how it works. Okay. So if IS is running on port 80 and we need to access it from somewhere. We have to open it, of course, at the security group level. In case you want to look at a detailed video related to security groups, there's a link uh, which is being shown. You can uh, go ahead and look at it. We have a complete dedicated video on the security groups alone. Okay, so we have done this. Come here and look at the public one. Let's see if we can get it now. All right, it says. The key and we will uh, decrypt it so we got the just paste it here. 
Okay. And we got the password for the private one as well. All right, so we are good to now get started. Uh, I'll try to log into the public one first. Okay, we have logged into the public instance and let me resize this for you. So it is starting for the first time. All right, we are in. Uh, you can see it is 5253, this particular machine. Okay, all right. Now let us go ahead and from here, we will try to log into the private one. Now understand that instances within a VPC can talk to each other, of course, right? So from here, we will try to log into the private instance, okay? So let us get the details of the private one. It is uh, this particular IP. Okay. And we get the password from here. Okay, so <clears throat> what did we do here? We have logged into the public instance first and then from there we are able to use the private IP and we are able to log into the private instance. Now what we are going to do quickly is uh, I'm going to enable a service on both of these machines and we'll show that how it would be accessible to you. Okay, and we'll also try to uh, uh, we will also try to look at the concept of network ACL here. So there is a, a dedicated video on security groups already. And the other layer of network traffic filtration is via network ACL. So we'll cover network ACL as well within this, talk, within this tutorial. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enable um, IIS on both the machines and then we move forward so it takes some time to this thing to come up in the meanwhile let us quickly go and do this here as well This particular uh, screen always takes time, guys. I don't know. <coughs> says collecting data. All right, so this has come up. Now I'm operating on the public machine. I go ahead and I will just enable IAS and then it assemble just to the next, next. And it's install. It will take a few minutes and it should be done. All right, guys, so our IAS installation is complete. I paused the video because it takes a few minutes. So this is on the public machine. IAS is complete, okay. And I go ahead and close this thing. And in the same way on the private machine as well, IAS installation is complete. So we can go ahead and get rid of this thing. All right, now while well, I'm going to minimize this and we'll take this IP address, which is the public IP address of the public machine, right? And we just open this in the browser. All right, so you see that it is opening up, great. So we're good. Okay, now what about the, so the service which I just started, IAS, which is a web server, so web service, inbuilt web server from Microsoft on the Windows machine. I started that, it runs on port 80 by default. That's why I opened that particular port in the security group and it is accessible outside over the public IP address. Now, what about that? Let us go here and I will minimize this. Now I'm there in the public machine. You can see its IP address here and we'll go ahead and open the browser here. And in the browser, yeah, okay, fine. I'm going to try and access the service which is 
launched on the private machine and we can see this is also working okay so uh, <coughs> it is important uh, it is so first thing we have understood now that anything any service which is running on the public instance that is accessible from outside so i'm able to access it from my laptop but any service which is running on this particular private machine right that would not be accessible outside because it doesn't have a public ip now but it can it would be accessible from the other instances within the vpc that's why i'm able to get into the public instance and from there i'm able to access this particular thing now one more uh, stuff let me minimize this and go to the private machine so i log i did a remote desktop to the public machine first and then from there i've done remote desktop to the private instance now here uh, remember we had created nat gateway so because of the virtue of nat gateway if this particular machine tries to internet access it would be able to do right that is what we, we discussed that what is the use of nat gateway any traffic which is coming from the private instance and uh, you know it is bound to go to internet it goes via NAT gateway, NAT gateway sends it to the internet and then gets the reply back and gives it to the private instance. So if this particular machine is trying to access MSN.com, it would be able to do that. So we'll just do some of the IE related troubles. We'll have to just add all of this, guys. I think I need to add it. I'm going to create an EMI with Chrome or Firefox. I'll pre-build with that. Okay, so anyway, you are able to see that we are able to access internet from this particular machine. So this is because of the NAT gateway. Now quickly go, let us go and I'm going to minimize this one. We will see the functionality of network ACL guys, which is important. Now, uh, I'm going to go to this particular VPC, the VPC which we have created. In this VPC, you can see the network ACL here. So the network ACL, which is attached to all, you know, all the subnets are associated with all the subnets of my VPC. Is this the default one which gets created with the VPC creation? <coughs> Look at the inbound rules. Um, we can go ahead and if we, if we go ahead and add a rule at say number 50, which is basically more in precedence with the 100 one, and we say port 80, and we'll say from anywhere and we can say deny then if we do this now because this 50 comes in precedence above 100 so now end result of this is going to be all the all the uh, uh, traffic on all the ports is allowed in bind uh, inbound except port 80 so i go ahead and i will refresh this website and it would it is it is rotating it is not going to it is not gonna open up so see here okay all right so see here yeah so we can go ahead and open up this thing and uh, if let's say i go ahead and just make it 150 so now it gets overwritten by the by the rule which is there on 100 and we go ahead and just refresh this website it opens up so basically allow deny and this number you can play with it the when you you know uh, you need to look at the order of this number and that is how it gets evaluated the number which is smaller that gets higher rank and that basically you know kind of overrides the one which is below so uh, if needed if you have any doubts on network acl i can explain you uh, your you know any issues or any doubts which you have please write that in the comment section i hope you like this please go ahead share and subscribe thank you for watching bye bye